This is a 1964 wheel horse, model 704 garden tractor. If you're interested, there's over 30 videos on my channel about taking this tractor apart, repairing what was wrong with it, and putting it back together. There's one issue I didn't fix then, so that's what I'm going to do this time. This starter and flywheel cover are not bolted down properly, so they can move around on there when you're trying to start it. This top bolt is now a stud with a nut. That's the only one that stays tight. This lower bolt is okay, but it keeps coming loose. The other side's where the problem is. The lower bolt is stripped out, so it can't tighten up. And the upper bolt is totally missing, because the bearing plate has the ear broken off. When you pull on the rope starter, the housing moves out of position. And now the starter's not centered on the flywheel. It don't work too well when it can move around like that. You have to remove this steering gear and remove the steering shaft before you can take the hood off because the steering shaft goes through the hood up here. I have a nut and bolt in here instead of a roll pin because I knew I had to take it apart again. The steering shaft is held in place with a set collar. With those two parts loose, the steering shaft should come out. There's three bolts to get the hood off. This one has the snap-on clip to hold the choke cable in place. I can't get it with my fingers. Gotta use some pliers. Now for the fuel line. And I have to take off the belt guard to remove the belt. These rear engine bolts are easy to get to. The front engine bolts are close to the front axle mount. I can't fit my socket in there, so I have to use wrenches. I can't get that one loose. I'm going to try a longer wrench. This one might work. And I get more leverage if I pull from this side instead of push from that side. I'm going to move the engine out so I can drain the oil. I guess I have to watch out for the kill switch wire.
that pipe is turning, not just the plug. Got to get another wrench. I'll let that drain for a while. That kill switch wire is screwed to the switch and it's behind the dash where it's hard to reach. It'll be easier to remove the switch. I'm going to leave the switch attached to the wire, but I'll put this nut back on so I don't lose the washer. I'm only going to take apart what I need to get the job done. This cover comes off first. I'm going to take out the spark plug so I can set the engine on the bench upside down. And I'll remove this cover so I don't bend it up. Now I want to get the flywheel off. All this electrical stuff has to come off. And you have to separate the wires so you can get them through this hole in the back plate one at a time. I need to straighten those terminals so they fit through the hole. This bigger wire don't look like it's supposed to come out of the coil. So I'll take the coil off and bring the wire out this direction. Good thing that connector fits through the hole. This stuff shouldn't be on there very tight. The spring washer keeps the magnet ring in position under the flywheel. That should be a slip fit, so I'm not going to pry very hard. Okay, I'll have to use the puller on that. I'll see if I can get this key out. This is PV Blaster penetrating fluid. I have a different type of puller on this one. Yeah, that's coming off pretty easy. I'm expecting that to be a slip fit once I get everything cleaned up. Where'd that come from? Was that on the back? There's not supposed to be one behind it. I'll bet it's the same one. And it stuck to the magnet when it was on the bench. Yeah, I only see one laying around here.
before I take the engine apart, I want to check the crankshaft in play. I have this indicator on a magnetic base stuck to the side of the block, and I'm going to pull the crankshaft back and forth to see how much it moves. It looks like it'll move about two or three thousandths each direction. That's pretty good. Remember these crankshafts run on ball bearings, so we're looking at how much the ball bearings flex sideways. That's not the in-play reading that I care about. The crankshaft should be able to move sideways inside the bearing races by a small amount. First I want to bump the crankshaft with this heavy soft blow hammer. Yeah, I don't think that's going to cut it for this test. I have this indicator clamped to the crankshaft. It's a shorter, beefier setup. Maybe this will work better. First I'll move the crank back and forth. There's about five thousandths total movement, like the other indicator showed. I want to hold the indicator probe so it don't see the shock of the hammer. Now the crankshaft should be at one end of its available movement. I'll zero the indicator. Then I'll use this pry bar to move the crankshaft. Well, that's pretty tight, but that's the movement I'm looking for, and it looks like about 15 thousandths. It varies a little bit when I turn the crank, because the face of that side plate's not perfectly smooth. Now I'll hold the indicator and knock the crankshaft back the other way. It comes back close to zero there. That's good. I'll try it again. Well, that's way off. I'll bet it's because I rotated the crank. Yep, it's closer to 15 if I rotate back where it was. I'll have to watch that. I'll do it again. Back to zero. Yeah, that moves around on there. I'll try to keep it in this one spot. Okay, just under 15 again. I think that's a good reading. Actually, it's about 14. I'm going to take the oil pan off next. I'm going to clean this gasket surface before I take the side plate off. I want a rag down there to catch all that stuff.
Okay, that's not what I expected. This has a bushing instead of a bearing. I don't think I've had a Kohler with a bushing before. That's a roller bearing on that side. This is the side plate I need to replace. I have some to choose from, but every one of these is for a roller bearing, not a bushing. All of these in this crate use roller bearings, but they're used with battery and coil type ignitions. What I need for this engine has standoffs here to mount the magneto. Those are all different. That's why I didn't get them out. The bottom line is, I don't have a side plate that I can use with this engine. Next I was thinking, Maybe I can change to a roller bearing side plate on this engine. Well, here's a standard 7 horsepower crankshaft that's used with roller bearings. I'm going to compare it to this crankshaft. This one measures 1 inch and 185 thousandths. That's close to a nominal size of 1 and 3 sixteenths of an inch. This one over here measures 1 inch and 180 thousandths, so that's 5 thousandths less. That's close to a nominal size of 30 millimeters, because roller bearings more commonly use metric dimensions. So these are not the same diameter. Also, looking at this scale, this bearing surface is about an inch wide, But over here, it's only about 5 eighths of an inch wide. Now, since I have to search for a side plate, it would be nice to have a part number for it. This is a microfiche system. They were used before computers came around. That's how I find the original part numbers for some of these parts. This is a book that has different slides for different engines or machines. I'm going to pick the one for Kohler K161. It's miniature photographs of each page of the original manuals. This machine magnifies the picture so you can read it. This slide fits under a piece of glass that closes down on it. I'll turn on the light. Now this tray slides around under the magnifier so you can find what page you want to look at. Kohler does everything by the spec number. It's on the tag next to the serial number. Luckily, this engine still has the tag with the spec number on it, so I'm going to find my spec number on the left side of this list. Then I have to go to the top to find the group. I need group 7, the crankcase. Then I come down the column to get to the row with my spec number, and it says number 92. That's the variation number. Up at the top here, it says that group 7 is at grid position C13. So down here, I'm going to slide this pointer to the box that says row C, column 13. That should get me to group 7. Now you can see the exploded view of the engine there, with the letters pointing to each part. The part that I want is that side plate. Its letter is H. You 
you probably can't read it that's a G this is an H it says plate comma bearing now I find the variation number 92 that's it there so this is my part number a-231660 well that's as far as I can go with this one and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do next if I can't find a good side plate with a good bushing maybe I'll try to repair my old one or I think I can change to a roller bearing side plate if I change to a different crankshaft. Alright, that's it.